Welcome to the fifth refactoring, where we're going to improve readability by refactoring the handle method to have one return statement. I appreciate that there is some debate around whether having multiple return statements is a bad practice or not, or whether a method should only ever have one. But for this video, we're going to refactor the method to have just one, because this will help with refactoring it later. If you have a look at the three return statements, you'll see that each one returns a JSON response object. Now, JSON response objects, as the name hopefully implies, create a JSON response with the data provided in the first argument. The status code for the response can be set using the second argument, which is set to 200 by default. An array of headers for the response can be set using the third argument. And finally, encoding options can be set using the fourth argument. Now looking closer at the JSON response objects here in the handle method, note that the first one returns a successful response, whereas the second and the third return error responses. Well, as the second and third JSON response objects return error responses, let's create a new utility method called getErrorResponse, which will be responsible for supplying error response details. The method will take one argument, an int called status code and return an array with two keys, status and data. Status will be set to the value in status code and data will be set based on status code's value. Let's flesh it out. For simplicity's sake, I'll use a switch statement as it's easier than using an if else statement to add additional conditions in the future. I'll add a case for when status code is equal to 400 and set data to invalid parcel tracking number then I'll add a case for when status code is equal to 417 and set data to missing parcel tracking file. After that, I'll add a default case which can also match status code being equal to 500 so that if the error code is unknown, it will set data to unknown error. Always good to program defensively. With the switch statement completed, I'll complete the method so that it returns an array with the two required keys. Status set to status code and data set to data. Hmm, let's make the new method better by getting rid of the magic numbers. Yes, they're HTTP status codes, but names and constants are often easier to remember than numbers. To do that, I'm going to use Shrike Teapot as a project dependency because it defines constants for every HTTP 1.1 response code in a class named RFC 7231, which nicely matches the RFC that defines those constants. To do that, as always, I'll use Composer. Here in PHP Storm's terminal, running Composer require Shrike slash teapot. Allowing for the speed of my internet connection, the dependency is now installed. Okay, with it installed, let's use it. So I'm gonna scroll up to the top of Parcel Tracker Handler, and there I'm gonna add a U statement for RFC 7231 from Shrike Teapot, and then alias it as HTTP status codes, as that makes its usage in the code, at least to me, that much more memorable. With that done, I'll navigate back down to get error response and start replacing the status codes. I'll replace 400 with bad request, 417 with expectation failed, and 500 with internal server error. And now the method is ready to use. Let's now finish up the video by performing one further refactor, which is reworking the if else block in the handle method. It's a little bit fiddly, but bear with me on this. I'll start by removing the entire if else block. And after that, I'll navigate down to get parcel data and remove the existing contents of the method, followed by changing the method's parameter name to parcel ID. With those changes made, I'll then add in a guard clause that will return an error response, specifically expectation failed, if the parcel ID supplied in the parcel ID method parameter is invalid. If you're not familiar with guard clauses, quoting Wikipedia, a guard clause is a Boolean expression that must evaluate to true if the program execution is to continue in the branch in question. Guard code, 
or guard clause is a check of integrity preconditions used to avoid errors during execution. Now, I know that I wasn't so keen on negative conditionals earlier, but they do have their place. For example, in this case, by using guard clauses, the new code will be much smaller and contain no nested if conditions. With that said, then I'll add in a second guard clause. This one will return a bad request error response if a valid parcel file is not available based on the parcel ID supplied. Now, all that's left to do is to return a successful response because at this point, the parcel ID is valid and a valid parcel file based on that parcel ID is available. So to do that, the method will return an array with two keys, status and data. Status will be set to HTTP status codes OK, and data will be set to the JSON decoded file contents of the valid parcel file, which was retrieved by calling get parcel data file name and passing to it parcel ID. After that, I'll update the handle method to initialize a new variable called parcel data with the result of calling get parcel data and passing to it parcel ID. Then I'll finish up the method by returning a new JSON response object, passing to it parcel data's data element as the first argument and parcel data's status element as the second argument. And now that we're finished with the refactor, I just want to clarify one small point based on the refactoring which we've just completed. I previously said that I'm not keen on multiple return statements. I am for them when they make sense, such as when using guard clauses as we did in this refactor. Now that we've completed the refactorings in this video, let's quickly recap what we've done. We drastically streamlined the handle method by refactoring the remaining code into the get parcel data method and then rather drastically changing it replacing returning multiple JSON response objects with an array incorporating the use of guard clauses to aid in that streamlining process. After the core refactor was completed, the handle method was then refactored to make use of it to have one return statement, which returns a JSON response object. At this point, the handle method could effectively be calling an external class. So in the next video, we're going to refactor the code further using the extract interface and the extract class refactorings to create one. I'll see you then.